Hey everyone, it is Foulplay here and I am back here today uh, bringing you a replay of a modern league that I went 5-0 in over the weekend. Um, I don't normally play games off camera or not recording, but I had a little bit of time um, Saturday morning so I thought I'd just play a league for fun and it turned out that I went 5-0 in it. Um, so this is a list that I used. Um, I had my 20 lands uh, with the 5 fetch lands in it. I had my 12th creatures. Going back up to that 4th core spirit dancer. And I must say, I do rate it. I think it's good. Uh, my 4 mana or, or my four, 4 of auras. Uh, Ethereal armor. Uh, Hyena umbra. Rancor. And Daybreak. With the 3 ofs uh, being Grispoon and Spider Umbra. And 2 of for Leyline. Uh, 2 of for Sentinel's Eyes. Main deck Leyline over there. Um, over on the sideboard, I've uh, dropped Suppression Field, I've just got the 4 Path, 4 Rest in Peace, 2 Seal of Primordium, 2 Force of Vigor, and 3 Gadok Teague. So using this magical tool over here, we'll uh, view our game history and uh, get on into this replay. So it would have been this one here, I reckon, was the first one so we won the die roll here against fingers MLD and uh, let's see what our opening hand looks like alright so opening hand looks like absolute gas um, by turn two you know we can attack for four and then uh, cast sentinel dies from our graveyard or something if need be I uh, would need one more card in the graveyard to allow for that, but yeah. Starting off with the uh, with the Razor Verge Thicker. In case this is Ponza, I might want to get the Basic Forest or something. Alright, so it's a Nurturing Peatland into Thoughtseize, taking Ethereal Armor. Uh, so we're just going to play our Razor Verge Thicket we just drew here. Grisburn, attack for three. Um, we could play the Mystic. Misty Rainforest, but we're going to take two extra points of damage there, and that's probably not as important. Like, the information probably isn't as important as conserving the life there. Um, Alright, so they do Dark Confidant. We jam Rancor, Dried Arbor, and attack. So Dried Arbor, obviously, uh, being put down there, being protection against the potential Liliana of the Vale. They reveal Inquisition of Kozilek. It's not going to do anything against the Misty Rainforest they already know is in our hands. I think they are a Lurus deck, and they do play Lurus here. All right, no, it's Tarmogoyf. So that's fine. Uh, they attack us for two. You know, we've got uh, five power in the air, and uh, if we draw any aura here, uh, we can kill them. I think they just end up dying to their Dark Confidant trigger here anyway. Alright, so they died all Liliana of the Veil vale reveal to the Dark Confidant there. Um, so that's that game over. Um, moving on to a sideboard. Uh, let's just go replay game. And then uh, we can view the sideboard and I can tell you what I took in or out from that. Alright, so it looks like I took out... Two core spirit dancers. Um, obviously, they've got a lot of removal. The card draw and advantage from core spirit dancer is quite good, um, but obviously, it's not the creature we want to be relying on. It's the creature that refuels and goes again in the later game. Um, and we took out one griff spoon, so we've got two core spirit dancers left in the deck, two griff spoon left in the deck, and one sentinel's eyes left in the deck. Bring in the four rest in peace. Um, Obviously, uh, Rest in Peace is very, very good against Jun-style decks, as we've all seen before. Um, so, obviously, I've got a mulligan this hand as well. Uh, it's got nothing going on. I've got a mulligan that too. All right, so we mulligan to five here. Uh, it's not a great keep. We need to draw land, and we're bottoming, like... I bottomed the Core Spirit Dancer there to keep, like... Rest in peace and ley line. I think, I think maybe the better line would have been to bottom rest in peace and keep the core spirit dancer. Um, but as you can see, this goes to a game three. We don't end up winning this one. Uh, but mulling it to fives, 
uh, severe disadvantage, like card disadvantage, and if we miss a single land drop, we're pretty stuffed. So we end up drawing Rest in Peace as our first draw, uh, which is really bad because we have one in hand. It's not the mana we want either. Uh, we really wanted to see either a mana or a one mana aura there, uh, which we don't see. Uh, so here comes something. Engineered Explosives on one, so obviously that's going to be pretty hard for us to beat. We do actually draw the Totem Armor, so we do get to attack for two. Um, okay. Um, and Engineered Explosives really indicates to you that it's Lurus deck. I mean, the fact that they were just green-black, there's probably a decent chance that's the go anyway. Um, as you can see here from what they've revealed, uh, they, they've they already discarded Allurus to the Inquisition of Kozilek. I just jumped through a little bit too quickly then. Um, but as you can see, uh, they've got Lurus Scavenging Ooze unearthed to return Allurus from the graveyard to the battlefield. Um, Liliana of the Veil, Fatal Push. So now, uh, now we know what's in their hand. Like that. Uh, we draw a Rest in Peace. So we're really not in a good spot here. Uh, we really wanted to draw land, just slam Rest in Peace and attack. Um, maybe rebuild later. So now we're sort of like forced into casting this Griffsburn and attacking for three. Our opponent's only got one mana on the board, so they have actually missed a land drop as well. Um, so they can't activate this Engineered Explosives just yet. So doing that's not too bad. But here comes Lurus. Um, and. Uh, they get back, they buy back their Misha's Bobble, get the draw off of it. So it's uh, unearth out of hand. So we finally draw the land here. I mean, we've got to, we've got to go ahead and attack here, uh, but we're really not in a good spot. I looks like I play the rest in peace pre-combat, um, and I could leave back Slippery Bogle to block, um, but I decide to attack instead. If I attack here, his life total goes down to. 12 and then it goes back up to 15 mine goes down to 13 where if I don't attack his life total doesn't change my life total doesn't change and They're not forced into cracking the engineer explosives like I really need this off the board to cast my other boggle and hopefully string together some auras um, So yeah, I, I just choose to attack here and of course they do find the land so th this is getting popped we, we can attack for one I don't, yeah, I don't need to play this other one. I've got Totem Armor here. Um, either way, though, we're in, like, a, a very bad spot. Like, this Ley Line is not doing much against their hand, apart from Liliana. Drawing Forest there is uh, pretty rubbish as well. So I just attack for three. I think it gets uh, dropped down to two. All right, no, they actually just let it resolve like that. So I play my second rest in peace here. Maybe it would have been better just to cycle the horizon canopy. Um, but also getting out two rest in peace is kind of good if they assassin's trophy one. I guess they're probably going to assassin's trophy the ley line though and then look to cast Liliana and uh, Edict Us. Um, yeah, like... Games... Yeah, there's, there's the assassin's trophy. Um... <laughs> So we, we can cycle this uh, Horizon Land here. They are actually fortunate enough to draw the Blooming Marsh as well, although they I think they got to look at it with Misha's Bobble, so maybe that's not as lucky as uh, I make it out to be. So we do take uh, three points of damage here. I'm sure I cycle this Horizon Canopy in end step, and then we can play our Bogle next turn, and then we need to basically draw an Aura, kill their Liliana, and it's just uh, it's just a little bit too much for us to come back from here. All right, so Daybreak Corona, a great card, but uh, no aura to enable it. So they're just going to plus this Liliana. We're going to discard our Leyline. I think they end up doing an Inquisition or something on us as well, taking the Daybreak too. They can also play Scavenging Ooze now as well. Um, yeah, like, we're, we're just, like, so far behind this game. Uh, it's not funny. Or oh, Dark Confidant plus Scavenging Ooze? Or they leave up Assassin's Trophy. So they're even leaving up mana for Assassin's Trophy. That's how screwed we are. Um, I just concede here because they can attack for five. I can't really block. And then uh, they minus Liliana. We, we lose our creature. And, you know, ga game's over from there. So then we go into game three. Um, 
I don't change anything from sideboarding, I don't think. Okay, no, actually, I did change something. I took out two Griff Spoons, and I brought back in the third Core Spirit Dancer and the second Sentinel's Eyes. So it's really leveraging around that Vigilance this game over the Evasiveness, which I think is fine now that I know that they're on Lurus, which I didn't in the first game. Um, I think that's fine. So, of course, we're going to be on the play. Um... Bogle's players love being on the play. Most modern decks do. Uh, so ship that first hand there because a core spirit down to hand just didn't seem all that impressive to me. Uh, so I mulligan to six. My opponent also mulligans to six. Um, I keep this one and I think I end up bottoming the Rancor. Let's have a look. Maybe I bottom the rest in peace. Oh, I bottom the land. Okay. Uh, well... I don't hate that. That would be better on the draw than on the play, obviously. But that, that land also doesn't allow me to cast Daybreak Coronet, so I think it's also reasonable as well. I think it's it's probably a difficult decision on what to mulligan. Like, you might want to get rid of Rancor, but then you lose all your power and explosiveness from the hand. You might want to get rid of Rest in Peace, but then you lose your interaction. This way I keep interaction, I keep my auras, and if I see land and I guess the top two cards in my library, I'm still okay, because if I don't see land here, I'm still attacking for three on turn two, which is not too bad. Alright, so no land. Uh, attack for three. suppose I should uh, get that interface going again. I'm not used to the chat box being open when I do replays. I don't know how you make it open or how you, you keep it sort of closed there. So opponent plays Dark Confident, which I'm fine with. Um, so we just play, we draw Spider Umbra, so we play Hyena Umbra, just attack for four. Four Trample, get that clock happening. Opponent gets their Dark Confident trigger, misses with uh, misses any damage with the Verdant Catacombs. For some reason plays Forest instead of the Verdant Catacombs. So I'm not sure what that was all about. I don't know if the one point of damage was all that important. Um, so opponent plays Plague Engineer, uh, naming beast of course. Our, uh, our burgle gets shrunk down. Uh, it still has first strike though, so we can attack into what they're doing. Now we do actually draw the Horizon Canopy this turn. Uh, so turn four, we've missed two land drops, but uh, we finally hit it here. So I just da jam Hyena Umbra, Spider Umbra, and attack here. Uh, I'm not scared of, like, Liliana because uh, they don't have enough mana to Assassin's Trophy our Leyline and cast Liliana. Um, and this is also, like, representing the most damage, playing around additional Plague Engineers. Um, you know, attack them, force the issue. Dark Confident reveals another Verdant Catacombs, so they don't take any damage there, and they play, play Alluris. So this is where I actually make a pretty substantial misplay, in my opinion. Um going into the next turn. It doesn't cost me the game, but it might. Um, Spoonet plays one of the Verdant Catacombs that we already know about. Um, so I think I draw land here, and then I pre-combat the Rest in Peace. So I should be casting this Rest in Peace post-combat. So if they don't know about Rest in Peace, they just chump block with probably Dark Confident, because it's the most mana-efficient creature to buy back from their graveyard. Um, but because I play at pre combat they actually block with Lurus. Um, it's very foolish. Um, but we're fortunate that they block with Lurus and they don't have anything to follow it up. If they have another Lurus in hand, you know, we're just probably pretty screwed. Um, so Dark Confidant trigger, uh, and they die to a Plague Engineer. So we don't get, we don't get punished, but we might have. Um, I think I would have been happier... Attacking without that. They probably would have blocked with Dark Confidant. They wouldn't have taken the upkeep damage. Um, but you just don't give your opponent the information. Even if you know they're blocking that way. You just don't give them the information. There's no point. Uh, so that was round one. We got the win. Very happy about that. So that was against Fingers. So then we versed Mistaken in game two. Just update that uh, score total there. So, we won the die roll again. Excellent. Uh, oh, I just skipped an entire turn there. Uh, so, I had to mulligan to six, and I bottomed the core spirit dancer because my hand looked really good. I clicked the wrong button. Sorry about that. Um, 
So opponent plays Ghost Quarter into Amulet of Vigor. So they're, they're an Amulet deck. Uh, and, you know, I'm just looking to be fast here. I have a choice between playing Spider Umbra or Hyena Umbra here. I do want to get Totem Armor on the board. I think I'd choose to play the Hyena Umbra in case I draw Forest. And then, like, I want to be able to utilize all my mana. Um... Yeah, so that is what I chose to do. So attack. Put my opponent low. Here comes a second amulet. So they're getting some triggers. I think my opponent chains like... Oh, wait, no, that wasn't this opponent. That was a different opponent from a different league. One of my opponent's chain like explores in with bounce lands. And it just did absolutely nothing. Because um, they weren't actually gaining any mana from when they were doing it. Or gaining any land on the field. Uh, my opponent just sent, like, a good luck message. Um, just saw, saw us late. See, like, now the chat box has just disappeared. This is very weird. So we attack for eight, and our opponent plays explore and then concedes. Obviously, we have eight damage next turn, and they can't interact with that. So game two, um, go into this replay here. So if you view our sideboard, uh, what I've done is I've taken out one... One Core Spirit Dancer, one Grist Spoon, and four Ley Lines. I brought in four Path to Exiles, two Force of Vigors, and one Seal of Primordium. Obviously, being able to kill their Dryad of Elysian Grove with Seal of Primordium and um, Force of Vigor is very good, and it also hits their Amulet of Vigor, so that's quite important. Might, might even get like a Badly timed engineered explosives as well if we're lucky. So no land. We have to throw that and go down to six. But uh, So that, that next uh, next hand had... I think it was Creature, Rancor, Force of Vigor, and Lands. So that wasn't very good. So I choose to go down to five. And this is an, sort of an awkward hand. But I have to keep it anyway. I think I end up uh, ditching Force of Vigor and Slippery Bogle here. Um... Alright, so I ditched... Okay, never mind. I, I went uh, full, full, uh, fully deep into this. Uh, I guess uh, ditching Forest isn't too bad, because it doesn't cast Daybreak Coronet. Um, and this, this actually gives me the option to destroy Turn 1 Amulet, which could be quite important. Um, and obviously, being on the draw, I'm more likely to hit my second mana drop by uh, Turn 2. So I think that's actually quite reasonable. Here comes Bajuka Bog. Uh, we draw a green aura, which is nice, because now we, uh, have an extra aura to pitch to Force of Vigor. So, creature pass. They now cast an amulet, and I think I wait until my opponent's upkeep to actually destroy that. So, bounce land. This comes in untapped. Okay, this is where I think they chain two explores into each other, and just replay the Simic Growth Chamber twice, and it's very weird. Like, obviously, it digs them two cards deeper into their deck, but it's not really accomplishing anything, in my opinion, because uh, they haven't got, like, a Dryad of Lysian Grove out. Okay, they get Talari West. That's not awful. Uh, but now this Force of Vigor is going to be really, really good because they haven't accelerated their mana um, at all during that turn. So now they only have access to two mana next turn. Three mana if they play it fair, and if their only land is the bounce land, then we're just in a really good spot. So here I play Rancor, and then I think I um, ditch the Redunt... Oh, I play Spider Umbra, so I'm playing really defensive around Engineered Explosives here. And then I can throw a Rancor upkeep uh, to a Force of Vigor. Get rid of Amulet of Vigor. Um... And I think I draw a land, empty hand, and uh, pretty much two turn kill my opponent from here. So attack for seven, put them to 11. They play Bajuga Bog. Uh, they have no creature to follow up. I guess it was a primeval titan hand. We, we draw second spider umbra, cast it, and attack. Um, putting our opponent to two. And... Mm, So, we could have attacked and put them to four, and then if they engineered explosives, we could have cast Spider Umbra from hand and Rankle from grave, 
and killed them. So I guess we got one more damage across this way because if they had done engineered explosives, we can still get the totem armor, still replay Rancor and attack them to negative one. So that seems fine. Uh, so that was game two. Um, win against Amulet Titan, obviously. Pretty happy to take that. Um, deck that I've had a lot of trouble with in the past. So now coming up against Bruno... Uh, Minerio and uh, oh wait no all right so my opponents won the die roll I believe and we've got a leyline hand which looks great um, all I'd like to see other than what I have is ethereal armor or daybreak coronet but this is literally a really really good hand um, no no complaints at all here from me. We draw the Raised Verge Thicket, so we'll conserve a little bit of life, save this Windswept Teeth, potentially for a Dried Arbor, because you see Green Black, you think Jund. Alright, looks like it is Jund, and my opponents, uh, what they've done by turn 2 leaving up 2 mana, it makes it look like they have Assassin's Trophy for this Leyline of Sanctity. So all I'm going to do is play my Fetch Land to hold up Dried Arbor, play the Rancor for 3 damage, um, and just attack my opponent for 3 um, because I don't want to get blown out and just lose the game for free, right? Uh, and Rancor is the most damage that I can represent there. So there's the Assassin's Trophy. Um, my opponent's, you know, ramping me here. They gotta take the Forest because I don't want to reveal to them that I've got three basic lands in deck and we've got the, uh, planes in hand. So here comes Inquisition of Kozilek. Obviously, they're getting rid of Hyena Umbra. And we just draw another Hyena Umbra. So we just cast that. Real easy uh, choice there. And, uh, yeah, attack for five. Still holding up Dried Arbor. Obviously, this isn't the best thing, but... Uh, if my opponent misses a land drop, we still just have them um, in just as much of a difficult spot as they were last turn. Um, so they play a land drop in tap, which is, just shows a lot of weakness to me. They're saving life total. They don't have the Liliana now. Um, and they play a Renin 6, which I guess I don't really care about, Like if I'm being honest. Uh, so we draw Hyena Umbra here. So equip, attack for 6, put them to 6. Play at our last Temple Garden tapped. Um, maybe we could have left that in hand, tried and made them like waste a discard spell or something. Uh, so Mountain Pulse on the Hyena Umbra. It gets it two for ones us, which is pretty good. Um, and they plus Ren and Six for nothing. I end up getting Dried Arbor here. I don't think this was correct. It may have been, it may not have been. Um, my theory was if I draw any, like, one power aura, I can attack, put my opponent, and kill them this turn. Um, also, I'm thinning my deck, but it's not very good if my opponent has Liliana. I feel very good drawing that core spirit dancer, though. So, here I just uh, attack my opponent. Uh, I think the Dried Arbor actually connects as well. So, my opponent's on one. It's the Dried Arbor for free. Uh, no Liliana. Well, yes, Liliana. Colligan's Command, making us discard Core Spirit Dancer. So, punished a little bit there. Um, but then my opponent concedes. So, they just uh, did the Colligan's Command, I guess, for information more than anything. <clears throat> so, we lost the Dyro. Um, so, here I'm sure I brought in my four Rest in Peace. So, I took out my all my Griff Spoons this game. One Core Spirit Dancer. So... Reason why I think Grispoon is bad into Jund is because they play Plague Engineer. Um, I do like the fact it makes it difficult for them to block. Maybe leaving one in is okay, and then ditching one Sentinel's Eyes is okay. Um, but you definitely do want to trim some number of Grispoon, because the fact it doesn't give you any points in toughness is pretty relevant. So we get a hand here with double ley line and it's a dried arbor hand so for me this is not good enough because having two ley lines after seeing main deck malmstrom pulse as well um it's really just like 
it's really a six card hand to me, and a six card hand with dried arbor, and although we got totem armor, it's pretty fragile, so this one's actually a lot better, and I think I do keep this one, bottom forest, and then if they have a discard spell, we have like two hexproof creatures, we have an aura, so they probably just take an aura, maybe they take a hexproof creature if they have Liliana, um, we draw the third hexproof creature. They're all the same hexproof creature, which is horrible against Plague Engineer as well, because he can just, uh, sweep my whole board, which is not very good at all. I think I end up playing into an Assassin's Trophy this game and losing here, so I just, uh, I get Ethereal Armor out of my hand so it's not discarded. Then I play the Scout to play around Liliana, which I think is probably the best line we could have done. Um, so attack in. So now my opponent shocks in a Blood Crypt and does nothing. So that's kind of scary. Um, I think I play like double Hyena Umbra attack and then he pops my Ethereal Armor and I lose a Hyena Umbra to Totem Armor. And all of that's not very good. And then, like, from that, we, we pretty much just lose. So now I think I get the forest play Slippery Bogle from my hand to play around Plague Engineer a little bit. But we just um, don't end up drawing anything relevant and then just end up losing the game slowly. Uh, unfortunately, maybe I shouldn't have done that attack. Um, I think I kind of had to make them have it at, at the same time. Like, I can't just give them a heaps of time to... Just, start playing Liliana, minusing, plusing, and then while well, they still hold up Tarmogoyf blocking, I think, I think there's merit to making them have it, but if I draw like a Rancor or something, suddenly that attack would have got them really well. Um, as opposed to now where we're just way too behind on resources and we're like land and creature flooded. I think I trade one scout here with the Tarmogoyf to preserve some life, or maybe I just get the Dried Arbor and block a Tarmogoyf to preserve some life. Um, they do let me block with the Dried Arbor. Maybe I should have blocked with the Scout this turn as well. Draw Core Spirit Dancer, which is not very good. They make us discard it with Colligan's Command. So now we can attack for two damage. Uh, we could leave it up to like block a random uh, Bloodbraid Elf or something, but. Then they get a Cascade Trigger. We're probably not winning that game anyway. Either way, we'd be double blocking these Tarmogoyfs. Best case scenario, Daybreak Coronet, attack, um, gain 5 life, and then uh, we'll take Lethal in the following turn. So uh, We lost that game too. So going into game 3, I think this was a pretty grindy one from memory. Um, so we won the die roll. Uh, that hand, I mean, keeping a hand with two auras in it, one of which is Daybreak, where they can two-for-one you with an Abrupt Decay and Assassin's Trophy, I think we can do better. Even if they make us discard the Hyena Umbra with, a, like, their turn one, we're just in a really not a very good spot whatsoever. So this hand, Dried Arbor Hand, with one other mana, it's going to be quite painful because it's Horizon Canopy as a land. Turn 1, you'd expect them to hold up Fatal Push as well, so I'm not in love with that whole thing. And I'd probably be looking at uh, discarding the Ethereal Armor if I kept this hand. I think I mull it. Okay, I keep it, and I ditch the Ethereal Armor. Alright. <laughs> I think this is one of those games where I go Dried Arbor, and then I draw the turn 2 Bogle, and then just get myself on tempo. Alright. So I just risk the uh, Hyena Umbra on the Dried Arbor. He hits Lightning Bolt in response. So I, it was probably correct to mulligan that hand. That was not a very good keep. Uh, now my opponent hits me down for a few turns until I draw land into Rest in Peace. And then I slowly stabilize and win from that from there. So there's Rest in Peace. <laughs> I mean, we're, uh, we're taking a lot of damage here. I think we end up going down to, like, one point of life um, while we win this game. Uh, doesn't want to uh, skip on through. All right. 
so we've got it. We've we've skipped through now. Um, I hope. Just let me do stuff before, and now it's being slow. So Temple Garden Shock. Uh, take a damage off the Horizon Canopy. Play Rest in Peace. I mean, uh, we've not got much going for us here. We're dead to, like, a Lightning Bolt as well. We're dead to any creature which isn't a Tarmogoyf. So we play Rest... Uh, we play Core Spirit Dancer here, or do I hold it? I think I have to play it, because I've got Totem Armor in hand as well, right? I think my opponent's just land flooded at this point and uh, not drawing anything impressive. Alright, so I actually hold the Core Spirit Dancer in hand. That's interesting. I think it's probably better just to play it, but I think I was also looking to draw an extra mana source and play Core Spirit Dancer and Hyena Umbra in the same turn. So we draw the Slippery Bogle. I do cast down the Hyena Umbra here, give it first strike. We can now block a Blood Braid Elf that's uh, played. I don't die to Lightning Bolt, by the way. I've got Leyline out. That was a silly thing to say. I assume my opponent's got all land and discard at the moment because they're not doing a whole lot. So here I think I cast the Ethereal Armor and pass and next turn Daybreak Coronet. Oh no, I attack. Okay, so I attack for six. I guess next. Oh, okay, next turn I have lethal with the Griff Spoon and they can't jump block. Alright. So that makes reasonable sense as well, but you know, <laughs> we could still lose this to any card that my opponent has. So here comes the Griff Spoon. Oh, the. I don't like that. I shouldn't have played the Spider Umbra. I should have just played Griff Spoon and attacked. They have the Abrupt Decay, they're hitting Grispoon anyway, and then Chump Blocking. Um, I guess this forces the Chump Block. If they do have the Assassin's Trophy, they have to... Yeah. Okay, so we win that one as well. Uh, not, not a pretty game, I'll tell you that much. Um, not a pretty game by any, any stretch there. So that was... The third match. Now we are up to our fourth match against Starfall. Don't remember what this person's on, but I think the uh, fifth opponent was on Tron from memory. We get them good with a Gadok Teague. Alright, so... There was a one-mana hand with Core Spirit Dancer Leyline. Not really good enough. This hand has two Core Spirit Dancers. Uh, I end up keeping it and bottoming the Griff Spoon, I believe. Just because... Uh, Normally, once they kill the first Core Spirit Dancer, they are a little bit looser and they want to start tapping their mana to apply pressure. And this is against Prowess, Blue Red Prowess. Yeah. So they play Swiss Spear. I just take the damage, get a Temple Garden. Not interested in Dried Arbor there, not against something with uh, Lava Spike, right? Or Lava Dart, sorry. Um, so I play the first core spirit dancer here. I draw a Griss Boon, which is not amazing, but it will block their flying creatures. So this one just dies to a lightning bolt or a lava dart. Okay. So that's quite interesting that they actually tempered themselves out by sacking their, uh, sacred foundry there. But I mean, I have no issue with that if that's what they want to do. Um, and then they cast a light up the stage, um, Revealing Opt and Fiery Islet. Uh, so we'll just bring that onto screen for you guys. Uh, so perfect, we draw land, which means we can Core Spirit Dancer and Sentinel's Eyes. So that's just what we're going to do. Um, we get a Rancor off the draw trigger, which is sweet. We hit an aura that we can uh, we can tap our, our forest for it, so that's really good. So now my opponent uh, just looks to advance their board, plays a Stormwing Entity, attacks... So this enters and scries two. Uh, uh, uh. Alright. Um, I was trying to see what they did with their scries, but it didn't want to work. So I just start by casting Rancor here. There's really no reason not to. Then I cast Grispoon, leave this Plains in hand, and I think I hit Daybreak Coronet, play Plains, and uh, win the match. 
So, nice attack for 15 there, um, my opponent concedes. <laughs> Beating prowess with a core spirit dancer. I, I told you it couldn't be done. Um, I normally side them out, so... Sideboarding wise here, I've sided out three core spirit dancers and a Griff Spoon. Um, so obviously Griff Spoon doesn't add toughness to my creatures. Flying is kind of important, but we do have it in Spider Umbra and the other two Griff Spoons. So we're still going to have a reasonable number of sources. I brought in four Path to Exiles because they're going to be really important in this matchup and killing those creatures. Um... And all my rest in peace are still in the sideboard. So in the prowess matchup, the thing you've got to be concerned about post-board is they do have spell pierce. Um, so this hand, double leyline. I mean, leyline's very good against this deck. We've got path to exile, which is interactive spell with their creatures. Our land kind of hurts us, though. Um, this is a close one. I can see me keeping it most of the time. Uh, particularly on the draw, we can hit a mana source pretty freely, right? Yeah, so I do keep it. Ley lines are out. Opponent with nothing on turn one. So... I think my idea here was to play this and then get a basic planes and play around Blood Moon, potentially. Um... And my opponent's just going to mana morphose into a Stormwing in Entity, I'm pretty sure. Okay, Sprite Dragon. Sure. So they attack us. Mutagenic Growth. You know, we're here for a decent amount of damage there. Um, so we draw Rancor. I think I just Hyena Umbra here and hold up Path to Exile. Oh, I do Rancor as well. Okay, I've gone heaps aggressive attack. Yes, sir, I've got Leyline Protection, so I can be a little bit aggressive. So stomp on their own creature just to uh, just to grow up by one. It's pretty nifty. Lava Dart does that as well. Flashback Lava Dart. So they've put a lot of resources into this creature. One card left in hand now. Um, we draw a Misty Rainforest. So I guess we, we play the Misty Rainforest. I path their creature before they can Spell Pierce or anything. Uh, attack them for five. And then we can fetch this fetch land into a temple garden. Stop taking damage off Horizon Canopy. Spurners played Hardcast the Bone Crusher Giant. I'd like to think they're in trouble if that's uh, that's their line. This doesn't have prowess, so pretty much the only way they get us here is if they go Sprite Dragon into a prowess trigger. Um, so I'm pretty happy cycling this Horizon Canopy. We drew planes for turn. We hit the Daybreak Coronet, which is perfect. We just cast it and win. So, um, Yeah, pretty decisive. I think maybe I could have, instead of playing that Rancor, held onto the path and played that earlier, which would have saved a little bit of life. Um, it worked out, but I think maybe it was a better line to hold onto path for earlier. Um... But yeah, that's that's great. Uh, that gave us the fourth win for the league. Takes us up to 101 wins for the record. So now we are uh, versing our game three opponent, Is for Shiz. <laughs> Very nice name. So we win the die roll. Awesome. I'm a big fan of winning die rolls. So we mulligan that first hand, which had uh, no hexproof creature. I keep the second one uh, and bottom a Gris Spoon, I'm pretty sure. Yep. Alright. So we'll play out our creature, pass through our opponent. Our opponent will play Tron land or into Relic and pass to us. So here I just go Ethereal Armor, attack for three, gets buffed by the Leyline. So most damage on board is best place to be, really. Um, so my opponent uh, plays Basic Forest. I'm very happy to see that Basic Forest. Of Ancient Stirrings, they reveal uh, Chromatic Sphere. So Basic Forest means that they, they do, won't have turn 3 Tron, um, which is really, really good for us. Um, so we draw the Temple Garden. I'm just going to shock this in, play Double Aura and attack. So I think I play Spider Umbra and Sentinel's Eyes, leave the Griff Spoon in hand. Um, them not having knowledge of flying is pretty good, and us... Getting Totem Armor is down is good because they have Oblivion Stone. 
And Sentinel's Eyes is good because if they do Oblivion Stone, we get it back from the graveyard put onto the field. Um, it's all pretty, you know, iffy stuff. Though. Oh, I leave the Spider Umbra in hand. Oh, maybe... I think I left that in there intentionally because the best thing they could do was cast Oblivion Stone and then we'd have Spider Umbra and they'd be like, oh, crap, now we're in trouble. Uh, so they seal and scrying, find the tower, play the tower, and sack Relic of Progenitus to draw a card. So now we just draw Ethereal Armor. So I think I just cast the Ethereal Attack for the win. Don't cast the Spider Umbra at all. Don't give them that information. All right. So a little bit fortunate that my opponent had, you know, turn 4 Tron instead of turn 3 Tron. Otherwise, uh, we would have been in a lot of trouble there. So here, I brought in my 3 Gadok Teagues. Um, and two Force of Vigors. The reason I bring in Force of Vigor is here, here is to hit a turn one expedition map. It's very important because if you can deny that expedition map, normally their land base can just fall to pieces and they sit there doing nothing. So I've removed four Leyline of Sanctity and one Core Spirit Dancer, bringing in those five cards I said before. Um, my opponent's, of course, going to be on the play. Look, <laughs> I am a big fan of this hand. We've got a good clock. We've got Gadok Teague. I'm keeping it. Uh, turns out we lose this game, but uh, I'm definitely happy with the hand. So here I'm just going Temple Garden into Bogle, I think, or into Scout. Okay. My opponent uh, goes Tron Land into Ancient Stirrings. Sorry, into uh, Sylvan Scrying. Getting the uh, Urza's Mine there. So here I just play Gadok Tig and pass to my opponent after attacking for one. Uh, I think they have a way to kill the Gadok Tig or they play an Oblivion Stone or something. Yep, so there's the Oblivion Stone. They've got mana up. We don't currently have um, any Totem Armor in this hand. So that was a real weakness from the hand. We haven't drawn it. Uh, so here I think I just go Rancor and Sentinel's Eyes and attack for like 6 or 7 damage and then look to reload after. Dried Arbor that we can get off that fetch land. Um, so yeah, attack for 6. Leave these Ethereal Armors in hand because they're going to be very important in actually clocking our opponent. Um, so there comes the Urza's Mine. So they suck the Oblivion Stone, blow up our stuff. So they do this during their turn, which is a little bit confusing to me. Followed up by an Ancient Stirrings. Like, surely you do that beforehand. Uh, play Expedition Map. They don't have the mana to crack it. So now we can get a Dry Darby here and attack for a lot, but not quite enough. I think if we draw a land, it goes from 5 plus 4. We can attack for 9 if we draw a land. That's... Still not quite enough, so we draw. We do draw a land, and I think I just go all in here. Okay, no, I play it a little bit patiently. I put the Rancor on the Dried Arbor, and then leave the Ethereal Armors in hand. So I'm playing sort of around a Khan here, exiling the Dried Arbor. So if I go all in there, I'm pretty screwed. I think... Maybe leaving the planes in hand was a better idea than just putting it on the battlefield. I think that was a mistake for me. Because um, then, like, the, if they Ugin plus one... Or, sorry, if they Khan and make us discard with a plus four, um, we discard a planes. Or maybe they'll target our land instead. Instead, they just hit Ugin. And uh, I, I think I actually do try to play it out, but we're just not getting there. Or maybe I cycle a Horizon Canopy and then just concede. Um, because I didn't want to, <laughs> like, there's no point playing the game on there from that point. Uh, we still have game three to go. It's not like that was our last chance. So we're on the play this game. And, uh, look, we got a great hand. We've got Totem Armor this time. We've got Rancor. We've got Core Spirit Dancer. I keep it. I play my, uh, my dude out. Pass to my opponent. So my opponent plays a turn one map, so... That's not what we like to see. So I'm just jamming Core Spirit Dancer here. Attacking with the Scout. Looking to get that really, like, oppressive clock on my opponent. So opponent, uh, during his turn, 
played Power Plant and Cracked Expedition Map. I don't know why they didn't do that during my turn. Like, they could be holding up Dismember or Spatial Contortion or something in case I go in on Core Spirit Dancer, but whatever. So I just go Rancor on Core Spirit Dancer because if they can my Core Spirit Dancer, I get the Rancor back anyway, right? Um, and I think I draw... Another Rancor. Okay, so then I cast the other Rancor on the Core Spirit Dancer for the same logic. Draw a Gadok Teague, and then uh, attack for 9. So my opponent's only on 10 life now. Um, they've got their Tron Mana happening. They play Khan Liberated. And I think I'm actually fortunate enough to draw land here, so I can go Rancor on the scout, cast Gadok Teague, kill Khan, and then kill them next turn. So, th this game worked out pretty fortunately. Um, of course, it would have been good uh, to turn 3 a Rancor on the uh, Core Spirit Dancer, hit land or Gadok Teague, and then like do Gadok Teague, and then just lock them that way. That's, yeah, not what happened. So, opponent... Uh, Played Expedition Map and cracked it, getting an Urza's Tower, playing the tower. So they still only got access to 7 mana here. So they play the Oblivion Stone. They've got 2 mana floating, another 2 mana here. So they're 1 mana short of actually cracking this Oblivion Stone. Um, I guess they didn't have a different land in hand to cast or whatever. Um... Otherwise, we would have been in trouble. So I don't know why they didn't just start with Play Sphere, Crack Sphere, and see if they drew a land. Like, Because if they draw a Tron land, we would have been dead to that situation. Ancient Stirrings. And they do an Ancient Stirrings off it as well. Find Khan Liberated. Um, but if they found like a land, they could have played and cracked Oblivion Stone in the same turn. Uh, it would only work if they drew the Tower, though. Um... Relic of Progenitus, Sack Relic of Progenitus. So my opponent did literally nothing there. So now we just like double Ethereal Armor, Rancor, Kill, Flex, <laughs> or Spider Umbra. Okay, we're going, we're going the safe route. Attack, win, bam. That's a 5-0 in the pocket. Um, all the delicious prizes that come with it. Um, and yeah, like decent, decent showing from the deck. Uh, the last three leagues I've played, I've gone 14 and 1 in total. Uh, it's taken my overall win rate up to just above 64% as well. Um, so that's pretty nice as well. Um, and yeah, the deck seems to be in a good place at the moment. And I'm liking my deck list. I, I sort of half missed Cartouche of Solidarity for some of these matchups. But I'm liking the extra Spider Umbra in there. And the extra Hyena Umbra and Grispoon and... I think this is just a better spot. I'm still not a fan of two mana auras that aren't Daybreak Coronet. I know we lose hard to explosives and uh, Chalice of the Void and things like that, but I'm just willing to take that loss to beat all these Bant control decks that are abusing uh, Uro, Cryptic Command, and Mystic Sanctuary. Beat those decks down as quickly as possible by playing out all these one mana auras, tempoing them, um, all of that. That's That's where I think the deck should be at the moment. Um, so thank you everyone for watching this replay. Uh, I know I don't normally do replays, but the last 5-0 I got did uh, got me like three subscribers. Um, so we're now up to 91 subscribers after I got another one overnight um, as well. Um, and yeah, I, I can't help but not put up a clickbait 5-0 because they get the views. They get the views. They get the new viewers in. Um... And, like, it's really good for growing the channel, which is what I need to do, do at the moment. Um, thanks for watching, everyone. If you're new to the channel, enjoyed the content, be sure to subscribe for daily content like this. Um, and ring that bell for notifications every time a new video goes live. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time.